Amen, amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And uh, the rain and everything, but it's dry inside. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you noticed yesterday evening, they, yesterday they swore in those three new board members at the, the school. And uh, two were bad and one were good. <laughs> <laughs> one of them and, uh, can ser uh, serve the other two liberal, but I saw like, just a clip of that earlier. Uh, <clears throat> looking at the, the news and uh, in one of the papers that we get, and uh, I've heard of this, and I remember uh, a while ago, a long time ago, when we said we allowed abortion, and that became commonplace, euthanasia would be right behind it. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're seeing. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing that today. I remember being in Europe and living there, they had, when I, we were there, they were, had legalized to where even a 16 year old in Netherlands, if she wanted to, she'd go in and get a doctor assisted a suicide, even without the parents knowing it. That's evil. Yeah. Uh, I'll read this, and I'll read this very quickly, uh, show where we're at, not just where we're headed, but where we're at now. It says, as Canada's surging euthanasia program continues to turn from morbid to horrific, the cause is exploding in popularity in the United States as well. But while the slippery slope is spiraling out of control north of the border, <clears throat> the machinery of physicians-assisted suicide is just beginning to uh, meticulously constructed, beginning of it to be constructed in America. Lawmakers in 19 states are debating legislation this year that would make it legal for a doctor to provide life-ending treatment for patients diagnosed uh, with terminal illness. The Daily Caller reported February 11th, currently assisted suicide is legal in the United States, currently in the United States in Oregon, Washington State, California, New Mexico, Colorado, Montana, New Jersey, Vermont, Hawaii, Washington, D.C. Uh, nearly half of them, I believe I saw on this other side, uh, nearly half of the U.S. is weighing bills that would make assisted suicide legal showing signs that debate among Americans regarding one's right to die is growing, the conservative news site wrote down. Isn't that something? When you step away from life, there's no stopping it. And, uh, and we see, they predicted that years ago, that's what would happen, and that's happening as we speak. And uh, uh, life that turns us back on God, there's only one direction, and that's down. All right, let's take our, our Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 7. You folks get to see that eclipse. Uh, I like, I won't mention any names, I like one of the pictures I saw with somebody with the welder's helmet on, watching it. I thought that was funny, but whatever it takes, amen. And uh, that we've sat on the back here and watched it, and pretty spectacular uh, to see that. And uh, we still have our eyesight and uh, wear the special glasses and all that. Now the focus tonight on our study is the subject I want to bring to the foreground and put emphasis on tonight is the subject of authority. <clears throat> and of course you deal with authority, you deal with God's authority. Uh, he has all authority <clears throat> and there was no questioning about it. He said it outright, he had authority. Every level of authority today is being challenged. Nothing is absolute. You take God out of society, the absolutes go behind it. Amen? And so we're seeing that today. And every level is challenged. Anything goes. And with that, you have a disorganization. Everything just falls apart. Uh, but God has all authority. It doesn't matter how the world mocks or what they say. He still has authority. All authority. The first one I want to look at is in Matthew chapter 7. <clears throat> but before we do that, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you for the opportunity to be in your house and uh, getting us safely to this point of the week and watching over us. And Lord, it's been some beautiful weather uh, that we've had. I know it's rainy out there. And I pray that thank you for keeping everybody safe to come tonight. And I pray you keep them safe as they go home later. Lord, we do love you for your, the many benefits, Lord, to give us. And uh, just for loving us, Lord, when we were yet unlovely. Uh, Lord, what such pure love. And, and uh, you're so gracious and merciful to us. Lord, we love you. And Lord, we know from the scriptures you have all authority. 
We do love you in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so we'll look at a few different gospels, different sites that showed this <clears throat> and reminds us tonight of this subject. Matthew 7 and verse 29, after he taught them, it ends the chapter with, for he taught them as one having authority. They weren't used to that. And not as the scribes. Now look over in Mark. We'll turn here, get our, our, our fingers nimble, amen, and exercise here tonight. Uh, Mark chapter 1, <clears throat> and verse 22, after he got speaking, after he had spoken once again, and it says, And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. You skip, skip down to uh, verse 27. And they were all amazed and so much that they questioned among themselves saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits. And they do obey him. They knew who he was. No doubt in their minds. Uh, look in, in John now. John chapter 5. <clears throat> Excuse me. John chapter 5 and in verse 26 and 27. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son, capital S, Son of Man. One other place. Colossians chapter 1. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 1. <clears throat> doesn't come out of authority here, but we see that it, it, it uh, no doubt is telling us this in the Colossians 1, uh, verse 16 and 17. For by him were all things created. No, they don't create anything today. They just simply take things that were already created and make something of it. And uh, But they, you listen to some of man that you think they created it. But it says uh, he created that are all things that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things, not some things, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And uh, that's the way it ha has been and the way it will always be. People today have a real problem with authority. So did they during Jesus' day? No difference. You look back at Matthew, but go to chapter 21. Chapter 21 and verse 23. Uh, he told him, verse 22, And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. And when he was coming to the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered said unto them, I also ask you one thing. Why? Because he knew it didn't matter what he would tell them, they still wouldn't believe it. And so they, get, they didn't answer his question, so he didn't answer them. We see over in Mark, <clears throat> Mark chapter 11, they, they, they had real problems in that day uh, with his authority. Nothing's, nothing's changed through the years. Mark 11 in verse uh, 27 and 28. And they come again to Jerusalem as he was walking in the temple. And there came to him the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And said to him, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority to do these things? That's amazing. And they never... they. God answered, no matter how much he told them, they wouldn't accept what he said. You know, this, this, when you remember as a childhood, you remember childhood? Some things came to your mind. When I was thinking of this subject, it came to mind that when it, there was this tear thing of a of, of command amongst children. And I remember one thing you, as, your, as a child, being as, you're amongst your siblings, and you would talk, tell them to do something, and of course I was the, the oldest in the family, and I heard this quite often. You can't tell me what to do. <laughs> and of course I let them know I'm the boss. 
Somebody didn't give them the memo. <laughs> and uh, you can't tell me what to do. Who are you? But you know, I think often, I think that carries over into adulthood, doesn't it? You can't tell me what to do. We fill in the blanks. It was the same thing at, at times in the Old Testament and Ju Judges. Remember the very last verse of the very last chapter of Judges, it, where how it ended? And everybody did that which was right in their own eyes. You're not going to tell me what to do. And it didn't change when it got to Isaiah and Jeremiah. He would tell them, thus saith the Lord. And they said, we, we don't care what you say, but whatever you do, we're going to do what we want to do. They just completely overlooked the authority. You know, authority is necessary. I saw this clip, and I, I have it here, printed off. <clears throat> it says, we believe that God has ordained and created all authority consisting of three basic institutions. The home, the church, and the state. Every person is subject to these authorities, but all, including the authorities themselves, are answerable to God, governed by His Word. God has given each institution specific biblical responsibilities and balanced those with the understanding that no institution has the right to infringe upon the other. The home, the church, and the state are equal and sovereign in their respective biblical assigned spheres of responsibility under God. Of course, it talks about this in Romans and Ephesians and Hebrew. We won't look at that tonight. He's given it to the government to judge between those that do good and those that do wrong. And uh, I just, the reason we see that we can't go out and arrest somebody. I guess they have some, something about a, uh, citizen's arrest or something. I don't know if that's still in effect. But you can't go up there and, and say, I'm going to arrest you. We, we don't have that authority. The city did not give us that authority, though they give it to, to some. Uh, he's given his authority, as we saw, to the church. And this is a whole another uh, problem in itself. It's a whole study in itself, and people don't recognize that. And so you have all kinds of things going on today. Uh, uh, people just uh, uh, having their own authority. It seems like today we live in a time that everybody wants their own ministry. But nobody wants to fall under the umbrella of the church. I was talking with somebody about tracks. They said, we have this problem. It says, we, we give out thousands. We said, we give them out free. But he said, we've got some of these people who give out thousands and thousands and thousands because they said it's their, their ministry and they, they give all these out and they're, they're the machines, they're giving them out all this time. And he says, we, we want them to give it out. We don't want them to get it wrong. But uh, we just, so we send it. We've had to limit it down to 500. And uh, I said, well, won't you tell them you're going to send them to their home church? And the church will give them to them. I said, that's the way to handle that. And they said, yeah, I never thought of that. <laughs> and, uh, but problem with the, the authority of the church. You know, Jesus says, I will build my church. And he did. He did. That's why the universal church is so popular. Because it starts after they have him starting after he died. So anything is, is possible. But you know, most churches were, were started uh, within the last 300 years to the present. And at that, then Jesus said, I will build. That's quite a bit late, isn't it? Uh, after that. Uh, and so, uh, we just can't go out there, like, can't go to arrest somebody. We just can't go out there and uh, start our own church. I had people there in the Czech Republic. They came, one man in particular, he came to our church. And, um, and I was talking with him, and he got to where he was just irate with me. He just, he, anything I said, he was against and uh, there's some of the things that he was saying. He was saying it so fast and something I wasn't getting. And, and uh, Brother Peter, he stood up and was starting to offend me and got upset because he was what he was saying to me. And the guy just, he got frustrated. He put his hand down. He walked down the hallways of our church and walked out. And he says, I'm going to go start my own church. <laughs> it don't work that way. That's the, it's, not, it's not the authority that God has given. We had authority. We learned in the military, didn't we? Chain of command. You couldn't go straight to the captain. You had several people you had to go through. And so it's all about authority. 
<clears throat> look at, uh, if you would, we were seeing a few of these verses earlier, but Mark chapter uh, 1 and verse 22. <clears throat> Mark chapter 1, verse 22. It says, And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. The scribes were recorders by trade. They recorded scriptures. They were given the task of copying the scriptures. And the scribes often repeated their authority basis. It is written. This is why we're saying because it's written over here. And so Jesus, he said that time. There's times he just said it because he was all authority. And they thought that was quite something. But there was times when Jesus would not say that. He just would say it because I said so. I just, I said it. And showing his authority. That's when they, his boldness, they had problems with such things. For example, look at Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. <clears throat> Sometimes he just says, because I said so. Uh, verse 21. He said, ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, that was." Whosoever is angry with his brother without a call shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother Reka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. He continues on this line of wording in, in, his, in his conversation in verse 27. He says, in bringing up the past in the, in, the, in the law, he said, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. He took what was written and extended it. Amen. And so he just because I said so. He did this because he has all authority. His name bears record to this. We won't turn there, but in Psalm 96 and verse 6 it says that God... Most High. That's how he refers to him. God Most High. And that means El Elyon. God Most High. Speaks of his authority, don't it? Over in Exodus chapter 6 and verse 3, it calls him God Almighty. And of course, and that's where we get El Shaddai. And of course, some liberal singer who I won't mention sang that one in the 80s. And... Uh, uh, but it's, it's, it's uh, uh, El Shaddai, God Almighty, all authority. When we say Jehovah, the self-existent and eternal one. That speaks of authority, don't it? Authority, the power to rule. God has all authority. What does that mean? What he says goes. You know, life, life in our society... Don't are brought up without that. That what is said goes. So you, because of that, you see them arguing with the policeman. Yeah. When I was when I was raised, I was told to say no, sir, yes, sir. Yeah. And here they will they will uh, swear at them, and, and all these things, and then they'll blame the police for what because they had to tackle them to the ground or something. And uh, you were told yes, sir, no, sir. And you respected those in authority. But we don't have that. We see that today in the slogan, no fear. Yeah. There's, a, there's a brand of clothes called no fear. Because they were raised to have no fear. But there's certain things we're to have fear of. Amen. And it's, it is healthy. We need to take heed to that because he is authority. God does have a right. We hear often today, what does... What gives you the right? Well, he has all authority. Most of mankind today thinks that the commands are just suggestions. There's, there's, they're not suggestions. They're, he's telling us that under all authority what we are to do and how we are to live. The absolutes. I ask myself sometimes when it comes to... Uh, God's people and people that I, I see and through the years in the past and what they do and how they go about things and, and how they dismiss things. And I ask myself sometimes, don't people realize that 
God's word is not a buffet. You go to a buffet and take it or leave it. But the Bible's not that way. We're to take it and obey it and leave nothing undone. He has all right to say what he does. We can either listen or we can do like the religious crowd in Jesus' day and say, who do you think you are? And the world mocks. Of course, God's people would never verbally say this. But I, I, I believe sometimes our actions we do. No, because he has authority, I want to kind of, too, we're talking this about the subject of authority. I want to kind of swing it in a, in a different way now, kind of change gears. Because he has authority, I've listed three things he has the right to say. Because he has all authority. Now, we talk about this often, but it was here. And so I want us to look at it. Look over in James chapter 1. James chapter 1. <clears throat> because he has an authority, he has the right to say this. James chapter 1, <clears throat> in verse 22, he says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. He tells us and commands us to do his word. Be doers of it. Not just read it, not just listen, but to do it. Blessings come to those that do. You know, we say this to other people, but how often do we meditate on this subject? That God's word holds the keys of life. It holds the keys of life, therefore it holds the keys for our marriage. It holds the keys for our relationships. It holds the keys for our, for our finances. It has the keys for all the problems that we face. It's an all-in-one book. Save you the time and the money going to the Christian store and it tells you all these things. And you need this and you need this and how to have a perfect marriage and how to have the perfect kids and all these kind of things. And people buy them up as soon as they're off the press. You don't need that. This here tells us. Amen. In all authority. If we do. If this, this key is the key to life. It produces life. Over in John chapter 20 and verse 31 it tells us this, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that believing you might have life through His name. He wants us to have life and have it more abundantly. But as I was saying Sunday, it must be done His way. We can't see it and read it, listen to it and go do something else. And then when things don't work right, then we blame Him for it. It can't work that way. So this book produces life, but only if we do what we hear. This here, this, when we're talking about has authority to say this to us, be doers of the word, this is where we lose it or make it based on doing it. It says, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own servant. Sometimes we deceive our own selves. We, we, we will read it and we'll and it just and it moves us, but not enough to, to do what it, to do what it says. And therefore we deceive ourselves. That's what it's talking about. But when we read the word of God, we pick it up in the morning or the evening when we're in our devotions. And if we were to say this to ourselves, Lord, what you show me today in my devotions. I promise that I'll carry it out. And that's something. What you show me today. Why we, our daily bread, why we read it daily? Because we need that for today, don't we? So Lord, what you show me, by God's grace, I'm going to carry it. I'm going to hold. You know, that's where meditation is so important. Because you can read it and just move on with our day, forgetting what we, we've read. That's why we read it. We need to dwell on a couple of the points. Whatever God spoke to us and meditate on that. That allows us to take it with us. It allows us to take it on with us. Lord, what you show me today, I will carry it out today. 
That's part of what we are to be doers of his work. And because he has the right to tell us that, be doers, he also has the right to say, look with me in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. <clears throat> Ephesians. Great, great book. <clears throat> it's Ephesians chapter 5, <clears throat> verses 1 and 2. <clears throat> he has all authority to tell us this, and therefore I gave it to Paul, and Paul, Paul told the church at Ephesus. He said, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. He was saying, Just like children follow their father, be able to hear to follow the heavenly father as dear children you're to follow him and how what are you supposed to follow him in it says in verse 2 and uh, be followers of him and what and walk in love as christ also hath loved us to walk in love and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling, smelling savor. How much anger, how much unkindness, how much unforgiveness would we avoid if we simply would do, how does God treat me? That's how I'm to treat others. Amen? So follow God and like he, he, he does. Follow, imitate Him. Sonship, we're to call it sons of God, right? After we get saved. Sonship infers an absolute necessity of imitation. We're to be imitating him. Now there's a lot of people that down here imitate people, and it should not be. There's only one that's supposed to be, that's imitating God. And so they don't have the love of Christ. A person can say what they want to say. But they're not Christ, because that's not how Christ does. Amen? Be ye followers, but be ye followers of God as dear children. This is the same sentence, under the same breath. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering, and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. We're to love people so much where we offer ourselves and sacrifice in order to Show people the love of God. Amen? This is a command. It's not, it's not for us to take or leave it or if I get around it or I just, that's just not me. The only hope we have of changing is knowing the Savior. Amen? He, he saves us and then continues to sanctify us as we let Him, allow Him to change us as He wants. Look with one other, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 11, in verse 1, he tells the Corinthian church, because they had a problem with that, and he told them, it says, uh, <clears throat> in verse 33, the chapter before, even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. Be ye followers of me, even as also I also am of Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. Now, if I don't go the direction that Christ is going, then don't follow me. That's what he's saying. Amen. We live in a time when pe many people will follow people and try to imitate them and, and the way they dress and the way they talk and the way they do everything. And you can see these individuals are carbon, carbon copies of these people. But talk about so shallow. People will follow people of the world but say it's crazy to follow God. Isn't that something? You're crazy. But this evening we want inspiration. We want to be inspired. We need to follow the creator of all living things. Follow him who gave us the breath of life. As I was thinking of those that follow followers of God. It, I was thinking of us. One of the, the greatest stories in, in the Old Testament is full of them, But one of the greatest you look over in the book of Daniel, if you would. Daniel chapter 1. I love this story. And I'm sure you do too. But Daniel, if you were to ask Daniel and his friends, 
Does it make a difference following God? Oh, they tell you there's tribulations and yes, there's some hardships. But they, does it make a difference following God? I'm sure they would all say, yes, it does. His life is everything and uh, he's everything to me. And uh, they lived it. But we see that it made a big difference in their fellowship. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 17. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge. God gave them. True knowledge comes from God. God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days, that you know, they were on a trial uh, probation period. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he would bring them in, <clears throat> then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. And the king communed with them, and uh, among them all was found none like Daniel, Hanani. Well, was that because they all attended the greatest schools and universities of their day? No, it was gone. He found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Michelle, Azariah, Therefore stood they before the king. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the musicians and astrologers that were in all his realm. And Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. They knew that their wisdom and knowledge did not come from themselves. It came from God. It came from God. And so, from following him, great things. We talked about life earlier. Life and all these things comes as a result of following God. Following him and being followers as he tells us. Follow Christ and you can be guaranteed he, he will never lead you the wrong way. Never find yourself on a dead end street. But we have to follow him. People will say, I'm a follower of Christ. But then do their own thing. It's kind of like uh, this. Uh, Natasha, we had a pow wow earlier about this. Come here. Sometimes those people are like this. And, uh, and so we say we're following God. And by no means am I saying that, but just illustration wise. I'm following God, so they start off. You took the instructions very well. You learned very well. Thank you. All right, and so we said, I'm following Jesus, and then uh, as we go, this is what happens. And then God gets the blame for it. You were, appreciate that. And, uh, but you know what? And then we blame God. Why didn't it work out? Where's the problem? I, I trusted you and all these things, and look what happened. God says, because you didn't really follow me. You followed your own ambition. And your own desires. Oh, did you pray about it? Yeah, I spent two minutes praying about it. He says, I'm the good shepherd. And a shepherd we're supposed to follow. He will never lead us in the wrong direction. God said in Romans 10 verse 11, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. But that's only for following him. Following something else, there's going to be troubles. First, as far as... Of course, in Psalm 23, it tells us all uh, the things that we get, the pass of righteousness and restoration, all these things because of following him. God has a right to say. Now, one other thing before we close out, uh, we see in, in Isaiah, one last time we looked at the doers of the, and uh, the word be followers of God, uh, this one very quickly. But uh, because he has authority, he has the right to say this in Isaiah 45 in verse 22. A wonderful uh, uh, verse, and if you haven't memorized, this would be a good one to memorize. <clears throat> he said, look unto me and be ye saved. He wasn't giving a suggestion or you get around to it or if you feel good or if you, if you want to do this, maybe perhaps. No, look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, in case you forget it. I am God and there is none else. He has all right to say all to be saved. If you're going to spend eternity in heaven, you must be saved. 
There's no getting around it. God has all authority when he said, No man cometh to the Father but by me. Not to church, not to good works, none of these things. Much of the world thinks salvation will one day be negotiable. We'll go and stand before God and we can negotiate. And if perhaps my good outweighs my bad, he'll let me into heaven. It's not negotiable. The laws and things he set up, even God had to abide by. That's why he had to send his son through which atonement could be purchased. That's the only way. Sin can't be cleansed but by the blood of the Lamb. That's the only way. Not by the baptism of waters, but by the blood of Jesus Christ. So he has all right to say these things tonight. In closing, you know, because God has all authority, you know what that makes him? Final authority. Doesn't it? Final authority. I, I saw this clip here and printed it off and it's pretty good. It said the Bible is the final authority in all matters. Our bylaws, the Constitution of the Church says that. That's the only hope that we have because it's the truth. Amen? Sit around and make Boards of men and all these, this is what I wish, this is what I want to do, and all these things, it becomes outside the word of God. you got a real mess on your hands. The Bible is the final authority in all matters of belief and practice because the Bible is inspired by God and bears the absolute authority of God himself. Whatever the Bible affirms, Baptists accept as true. No human opinion or de decree of any church group can override the Bible. Amen. Even creeds and confessions of faith which attempt to articulate the theology of Scripture do not carry Scripture's inherent authority. Isn't that good? Always on the side of right we must be. I wanted to end this. As I was studying this, I, I, I remember a, a, uh, something that happened to my dad that deals with authority. <clears throat> My dad went to Baptist Bible College, <clears throat> came here in 74. He was a year behind my uncle daddy because he got saved a year or so later. <clears throat> my dad came here and he said uh, he wasn't raised in a Christian home. He didn't. Uh, he went a few times on the bus, uh, the, the, the church there, I forget the name of it there, a big church in Dallas, pastored by Chris Will. And uh, they would come and pick up him on the bus. And my dad has one of his memories as a little kid being bounced on the knees of Criswell uh, there in his office. And, um, but he did grow up in, in church. He didn't, in this, in, and so uh, when he got saved, he came here because uncle was here and he felt God was leading him here. And God had called him to preach just two weeks after that. And he said, God, he said, he, meant, he said this to the Lord. He said, Lord, I, I don't know anything. But Lord, I'm here to, to learn. And Lord, I need you to teach me. Because I want to learn right. And so he went to BBC. And of course that BBC not only has their teaching uh, part of it. But they had the sending side. The BBF. The Baptist Bible Fellowship. And everybody that's going through BBC. Was going through the fellowship. Just about. And, uh, and so. Uh, when it came time to graduate. And they said now off to the BBF. And my dad says. I'm not going to do that. And they just thought he was way out there. And says, uh, you, you need to go to the BBF. And he says, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I feel, and I believe according to the scriptures, that I must go out through my local church. And uh, so he said, and that's why it took him twice as long, because n nobody knew how to deal with this. This is strange. You're not going through a board? You're not going through some sending agency? One pastor even told him, he said, uh, well, if you're not going to a board, then who's going to keep an eye on you? My dad. The Lord. <laughs> they didn't know what to do with him. But he says, I read in my Bible that, you know, God sent out Paul and Barnabas 
I believe I'm going to go through my local church. And he stuck by that. And, uh, and so it took longer, but uh, the, the BBF and them, because they weren't the identity of a church, they weren't the umbrella of the church. Some of these in the past were, were asked to be so, and they wanted to be their own identity. But the places like BBF were telling my dad, you needed $3,000 in uh, 1980 to go to the Northwest Territories of Canada. You need $3,000. They'd be like saying $7,000 a day or more. And he says, and he just heard him say that. And others thought, based on that, he says, I'll go when I think God wants me to go, whatever water I have. And so he, we left here and had less than half of that. Now the world would say, that's crazy. But God says, $1,200 we left to go to North Ter Territories with two kids, a three. And but we got up there and what they couldn't see, what God could see, is we got there and we bought a house, three bedroom house, up there in the Northwest Territories for $7,000. We never had any rent after that. You know, God's way is always the best way. Amen? That's why we got to follow this, not what, what man says. Man comes and goes. Their creeds and all their things come and go. But the word is, of God is still here. That's the final authority. Our, our everything we do should be based on this. If it's not based on this, then we need to change it and get it back on this. Amen? And everything in our life. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your goodness to us. And uh, Lord, we thank you that we have a solid foundation. As the Bible said, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. Lord, we thank you. Lord, that uh, because we can, we can stand on that solid rock and provide so much uh, stability for our life. And Lord, we look around in this world today, there's so little of it. They're based on man and man's teachings and thinking. But Lord, I'm so glad tonight we can be based completely on you and not be ashamed or and we don't have to ever look back. Lord, we love you. Thank you for your goodness to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, amen. amen. All right. Uh, let's go into our prayer time.